Ball pythons are probably the most popular pet snake that you could find, but what if you're looking for something a little bit more unique, something that suits you a little bit better? Well, today, let's go over the top five best alternatives to ball pythons. My name's Adam, this is Pikachu, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now don't get me wrong, I understand why ball pythons are so popular. They have every right to be. They're an amazing snake and I love ball pythons, but everybody and their brother has one. So what if you want something that is not only more unique, but has more unique care requirements, acts a little bit differently. There's just something about ball pythons that you think you can get better. Well, you can, and there's five. So let's start off with number five, dwarf Burmese pythons. What are you doing? Now I've talked about Burmese pythons on this channel before, but dwarf Burmese pythons actually make probably the best option. The only reason they're not number one on the list is simply because they can be hard to find because we haven't really been keeping them in captivity very much, except for around 2003, we started bringing a lot over for zoos and things like that. This is an instance of insular dwarfism. Basically what that means is because a certain species is confined to a smaller region like an island, they evolve to be smaller. The prey that they would need to be of that size, like a mainland retic or a mainland berm, they just don't have and therefore they can't get to that size. So they just evolve to feed on smaller prey or less prey islands. You see this a lot on islands, and we're going to get to another example later on in the list. But that's not why you're here. You want to know why they're good as a replacement. Well, they are beautiful. They are absolutely gorgeous, and you can find morphs just like ball pythons. Not as many, but nothing on the list is going to have morphs like ball pythons. They can also act as handcuffs if you're into that sort of thing, just like a ball python, but more seriousness, if you're into Burmese pythons, but they're just too big, and that's why you're after a ball python altogether, what are you doing? The dwarf variety of berms work really well because although the largest one ever recorded was eight foot two, which is way too big if you're looking for a ball python, it averages right around four to six feet. So basically it's almost exactly like a ball python in terms of the size. When it comes to size, ball pythons are probably gonna top out around five feet. Some females maybe get close to six feet, but Pikachu here is about four and a half feet. This is pretty typical. So you can get that in a Burmese python. And berms usually, although very docile and slow, are a little bit more curious. Now Pikachu, for some reason, is being quite curious right now, but the berm, that's something that you're gonna find much more common. Where ball pythons, a gripe that people have is that they're boring. They just sit there, they're pet rocks. I don't agree with this, but if this is you, you think this way, a berm might be your solution. Another gripe that people have with ball pythons, one of the main ones, and I totally understand, is that they don't freaking eat. And Pikachu is no exception to this rule. Get out of my armpit. He actually goes on five month hunger strikes every year. He just got off of his hunger strike just recently, maybe a couple weeks ago, and he's pounding rats like nobody's business now. But with berms, this is rare. Burmese pythons are trash cans. They will eat basically everything that you throw at them. So you don't have to worry about that as much as with ball pythons. And berms oftentimes don't have an issue getting onto frozen thawed like some ball pythons do. And I always recommend you feed frozen thawed rodents. It's just easier, it's usually cheaper, and you don't have to worry about watching a cute little innocent rodent die. I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, great but I'm not. I just, Ratsicles are kind of better for me. All right, number four, and another one we've never spoken about on this channel before, Angolan pythons. Now, Angolan pythons, I think that if it weren't for that civil war in Angola, which is where they're from, by the way, which is just a little further south on the west coast of Africa, you would see more of these in captivity. In fact, the only reason that we don't really see a lot of wild-caught ones coming in is people don't want to go find them because where they are, are, is littered with landmines from that Angolan civil war, which is long over, but the landmines still persist. So no one's going to find snakes when they're really not that expensive and not really worth the risk of maybe losing a limb, right? You find too many Angolan pythons, you step on a landmine, boom, there goes your leg and you're working on IHOP for the rest of your life. It just doesn't seem like it's worth it. But this is good for you because as they grow in popularity and as more people breed them, you're gonna find that 
just like ball pythons, almost everything that's available to you is captive bred. And for a myriad of reasons, which we've talked about in several other videos, you always want a captive bred one. You're not worried about parasites or dehydration from the trip, or it's just, all in all, it's better to have a captive bred animal. And with Angolan pythons, they're almost always captive bred, at least in North America here, and from what I understand in the UK as well. Again, these could be number one easily. It's just that they're kind of expensive. Around here in North America, and at least in Canada where I live, I see these guys for between 600 and 1,000. So pretty expensive considering there's no morphs that I know of, and these are just normal looking Angolan pythons, which are beautiful, by the way, they look amazing, but a normal ball python is like 20, 40, 60 bucks maybe if you buy at a PetSmart because you don't know what you're doing, you might pay 100. But what I'm trying to say here is some people will get ball pythons that are normals as babies for free because people just want to get rid of them. Where an Angolan python, if you can get one for under 300 bucks, you're doing really good. And even if you have the dough to go buy one, you might not be able to find one because they're not really that common, although they are gaining in popularity and I like to blow things up. So, I mean, if you're an Angolan python breeder, I hope that you get some extra business if people watch this video. And the reason that I went with Angolans over something like a Woma Python or something like that is just simply because they are so closely related. They look similar, they act similar. As babies, sometimes it takes a little bit of work to calm them down, but I've had the pleasure of holding these guys and handling them at a, a Reptile Expo a few years ago when, you know, we could do that sort of thing. And they were absolute dreams. They moved around a lot more than ball pythons. But in terms of care, they're gonna get to about six feet. So like just under six feet usually. So very similar in terms of the size. And because their temperature and their humidity is very similar, although they do like a hotter basking spot from what I understand from the Angolan breeders that I've spoken to personally, I think that it really makes sense. If you're prepared for a ball python and you're prepared for the heat, the humidity, the size of the cage and everything like that, but you just want something a little bit different, and golden pythons can be kind of perfect. So long as you got an extra couple bucks because they're a little bit more expensive. Just before we get to the next one, if you want a free shirt, we're giving away 10 as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers. Leave this emoji here, like the video, hit subscribe and follow the Instagram channel. Wham bam, Bob's your uncle, you might win a free shirt. All right, back to the video. Number three, something that you're probably sick of me talking about on this channel, Doomerals Boas. Now, Doomerals Boas are a fan favorite of basically everybody who talks about them, including me. Everyone in the comments section, man, I didn't know about Doomerals Boas, they're so cool, where can I find one? I wish I could tell you. That, again, is why they're not higher on the list. Well, two reasons. First of all, they do get bigger than ball pythons. They're gonna get somewhere around six feet, four to six on average, which is normal for a ball python, but females, you'll regularly see them get up to seven feet, which is a little bit bigger, and they get thicker around. I've seen Dormal's boas that are close to 40 pounds. You'll never find a ball python that is 40 pounds. You just won't, unless you have the most obese, ridiculous thing that is a monstrosity, but I've never seen this ever in my life. Now, Dumerals boas come from Madagascar, so it's a very unique type of species. They are a ground boa, so although ball pythons sometimes will exhibit some arboreal behavior, like Pikachu we've seen him do before, you're not gonna find Dumerals boas as adults do this. Most of the time, there's always outliers, and I know because I get comments, well, my Dumerals boa doesn't know that, you should, I, I get it. There are certain examples where, I mean, even some of my tortoises try to climb on branches and stuff. Basically, as a rule, you're gonna find them mostly on the ground, and you're gonna need the same sort of enclosure, but maybe a little bit bigger. A big female, instead of a four by two by two, which is what I recommend for Pikachu, something of this size, a ball python, full grown ball python, which is equivalent to 120 gallons, by the way, I would recommend something that's probably six foot by two foot, rather than four foot by two foot, but with a male, you could probably get away with the same size. And surprisingly, the humidity is very similar, but Dumerals boas can actually go on the low end and have perfect sheds and continue eating and have no issues, where with ball pythons, if you don't give them at least a spot in their enclosure to get to over 50, 60%, you might have issues with shedding. Where with Dumerals boas, my Dumerals boa stays around 45, 50% humidity and has full sheds, no problem every single time. And again, another thing that I'm gonna continue hammering home with all of these guys, Pikachu goes on five month hunger strikes. Cubone and Marowak never ever do that 
ever. When I stick something that remotely looks like a rat into the cage, Cubone will strike at it like crazy. Now once you get her out of the cage, she's a dream. No problems whatsoever, but it's something to be aware of that they do have a good feeding response. If you're interested in Dumbo's boas, hop on the train right now because I'm telling you, the price is only gonna go up. Last year I got Cubone for about 200 bucks with an enclosure, and now the cheapest ones I see are around 400 bucks alone. The prices are going up because demand's going up faster than supply can. You're gonna find really great breeders like a Jason's Exotic Reptiles or a Chuck Royal at Serpent Exotics in Canada, just as examples, but there are people who are working on it. Slow, docile, fun to handle, and not big enough to be dangerous, but super impressive. Dumbo's boas are awesome. All right, number two, and again, one I've never spoken about on this channel ever before, Hog Island boas. Now, Hog Island boas are very similar to other boas I've spoken about, BCs and BIs, like my girl Franny here. Well, that's because technically they are a BC. They don't have their own type of classification. They are in a similar region as well. So the care is similar to a BC because they are off the coast of Honduras and a very small, I think it's two islands. It's about 37 square miles that you'll find the entirety of the range of the species, which is insane. 37 miles is nothing. But the reason I think they're amazing is because the size is basically exactly the same as a ball python. Four to six feet again. So you're seeing a trend here. I'm trying to pick things that are of similar size or at least very close. And with these guys, you're going to find them off the ground a lot more than most ball pythons. Most ball pythons will spend very little time in the trees or on perches or whatever you give them, where hog island boas, you'll find them much more frequently off of the ground, which to me is awesome. I like our boreal behavior and our boreal snakes that don't try to bite you every time you get into the cage, that's a plus. And I think those are more rare than terrestrial species. So that's why I had to put them on the list. Not only that, but they are easily affordable and you can find them. We've been bringing them over from these areas where we find them since the 70s. So there's a lot of supply here and there's a lot of breeding effort going on. The reason that these guys I think are better than just a BC or a BI it's just simply because a BC or a BI might get 10 feet or bigger. Well, these guys definitely will not. And again, they're really good eaters. So the whole thing with ball pythons, they don't eat, that's why I don't want one. You don't have to worry about that with anything on the list, especially hog island boas. Holy cow, they will go after food. I just think that localities of boas, especially South American, Central American boas, you're gonna find much more popular. They are already pretty popular, but you don't find a lot of people talking about them on YouTube or their blogs or their websites. And I think you're gonna see that change quite a bit. I wanted to include two different types of boas because maybe some people don't want an enclosure to have extra height. They want something that's only on the ground. So therefore you get a Dumal's boa and it's a little bit bigger, or maybe you want something that is more boa e that you're used to with South America and Central American boas. So I wanted to include the hog island. So there's your two options. And number one is something that is kind of surprising unless you live in Australia, Antaresia. Now this includes Stimson's pythons, spotted pythons, children pythons, and pygmy pythons. The reason I always include the entire group is because these species of snakes are so similar, it's almost impossible to differentiate between them just by looking at them unless you actually know what you're looking for. If I took a spotted python and a Stimson's python and I put them in front of my mom and said, hey mom, what's the difference? she would say this one's bigger than this. Like she would have no idea. And that's because they are all from Australia, just different areas of Australia. And the size is basically the same. They're all gonna top out around four feet. Now there's differences, right? Because spotted pythons are bigger. So you'll get these guys around four feet, a little bit bigger than four feet maybe, but they are thinner bodied than a ball python. If you want something even smaller, Pygmy pythons, or anthill pythons they're called, are the smallest python in the entire world, and these guys are gonna to top out closer to about three feet, which is insane. That's a similar size to a rosy boa, and I didn't put rosy boas on here because they were too small. So if this is you, and you want something that is even smaller than a ball python, but you want something that isn't fragile, and you want something that's still a python, well, spotted pythons. In my opinion, those are the best. Although children's pythons are probably easier to find and there are a few colorations and morphs that you can get your hands on where you can't really with pygmy pythons unless you live in Australia or you know something I don't know. 
A couple really good selling features. If you're a viewer in Australia and you've been thinking, dude, I can't have any of these things, you can have this one. You can actually have these in Australia and I don't know of anywhere where they are illegal. Where with even dwarf berms, if you're in Florida, you can't have them. There's a bunch of places that you just can't have them at all, even though they're not harmful to people. Lawmakers will be lawmakers. But with a spotted python, you don't have to worry about that at all. So you can have them basically everywhere. They're semi-arboreal again, and they are very nice to handle. They're very fun to handle. You can tame them out as babies, and then usually they're pretty good as adults as well. And if you're thinking about ball pythons or an alternative, maybe you just want something that's great to handle. Well, this is your option. And they pound food like nobody's business. Holy cow, my boy Jimmy here pounds food. Never had an issue at all. Plus, look how cute he is. He's so, so cute. Okay, so there you go. Those are your top five alternatives to ball pythons. Whatever your reason is that you want something that's like a ball python, but not a ball python, well, now you have five options, so. Look into them, do your research before you get them, of course. And I wanna say thank you so much to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing, just the best. If you want extra content, which I'm gonna start pumping out a lot more of, next month there's gonna be Patreon videos like you wouldn't believe. If you want extra discounts on the merch, if you wanna see these videos early, know about reptiles in my collection that I don't talk about, for as little as $1 a month, you can be a Patreon too. Or patron of Patreon, Patreon supporter. And for everyone who took the time to hit like, subscribe, and follow the Instagram channel, you guys are awesome, and you're gonna be part of the draw. So, I wanna say thanks, and because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.